Good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I know I said we were going to be heading out of Washington State by the end of the summer, but believe it or not, this is part of that. We're actually going north on I-5 <laughs> towards Seattle. Uh, I have this new setup with the RV towing a smart car, and I figure it's time to give King County a little bit of love with Tater Top because it's going to be so easy to maneuver through traffic and find parking spaces that I can really take in some new stuff in, up in King County. But in order to do that, we got to get through some congestion here on I-5, I'm sure, as we get to Tacoma. Thank you for joining me, guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet. Nomad Internet, one of these ways. Link below in the video description. Let's go have some fun today, guys. Pro Shop says entering Tacoma. It is 10:17 on a weekday morning, but still, I've never just been driving 60 miles an hour through this little portion right here. Exit 129. We are in Tacoma, and it's it looks like it's just wide open. This could be a good day, guys. This could be a good day. Yeah, that's our exit 133, and we're still cruising. Uh -huh. You know what? They finished a bunch of construction here. That might be what's... Because there's five lanes right here with the carpool. And this is all new. Did they finally fix this Tacoma mess? Maybe that's what's going on. Anyway, we're going to be heading through uh, trying to get near the Tacoma Dome here. I, just, I can't believe how wide open everything is. This is awesome. You guys that are from around here, has this ever happened on your commute? I, I, never seen Tacoma wide open. Can't see it, but right on the other side of that hill is the Tacoma Dome. I guess technically this is where it used to get really bad. But you can see in front of us, there's the Tacoma Dome right there. And they're still going 60 miles an hour around it. I've just, just never seen that before. I, it's awesome. All right. Uh, <laughs> bear with me, guys. I'm sure a lot of people drive by or walk past this strange orb sphere and uh, think nothing of it. Right now it almost looks like a, a greenhouse of sorts. But actually, this weird sphere has a lot of history. You have to go back to 1962. They held the World's Fair here in Seattle. And after the World's Fair, not a whole lot remained. In fact, I think just really the Space Needle. Everything else was either thrown away or given away. But uh, one lucky homeowner got to keep this thing, which was an elevator back in the day at the World's Fair. They had this thing on the intercom where they would say, Please step to the rear of the spear. And uh, it was an elevator that moved up and down between two floors and uh, kind of space futuristic type of thing. And uh, for whatever reason, this lucky homeowner uh, got to keep it. I don't know what the story is behind it necessarily but he actually carved out part of his house there, cut part of the porch there to fit the sphere in there. And uh, I don't know, it almost looks like it's an Airbnb of sorts now. There's nobody here right now. I'm just standing on the sidewalk, but uh, pretty interesting. Today's 2022, so this is 60 years old. That sphere is 60 years old. A lot of history there. That's pretty cool. I wonder where all the other junk from the World's Fair ended up. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm walking back to the RV, stopping here at the beach, I did a little bit of research, looked on my phone, it actually had a name, it was called the Bubbleator. The Bubble Elevator, Bubble It, Bubbleator. Bubble, yeah. That is uh, Puget Sound out there. Stinky. Very, very stinky right here by the shore. A lot of seaweed. And it's it's a tidal place here, so. Just a, just a freaking glorious summer day in the Pacific Northwest. I feel like I've earned this like crazy, you know? <laughs> Today looks to be the last day in the in the mid to upper 90s here in the Pacific Northwest. Then it's going to go back to the 80s, so we should be good. I got the air conditioner on in the RV for the kitties, so they're going to be comfortable. And I'm going to be comfortable, more importantly. I care about my kitties. But yeah, let's go get on the road again. Those are interesting. It's almost like palm trees of sort. All right, this says Tacoma Dome parking, but technically that's not where we're going we're going to this big big huge structure in front of us right there 
hopefully. I don't know where we're going to park necessarily, but this is something I've been wanting to do for many, many years, guys, and just sitting in Tacoma traffic parked and looking over at this structure, I've been like, man, I'm going to go do that one day. Man, one day I'm going to go check out this place. <laughs> well, that day is today, and I get to share it with my viewers. So, let me get up here to the front and we'll figure this out. Yeah, there's the Tacoma Dome there. I've seen uh, a lot of concerts there. I don't think they do sports or anything there, but uh, let me see, I've, I saw Lincoln Park back in the day, Breaking Benjamin. I uh, saw a country, was it Kenny Chesney, I think? Yeah, I gotta make a U-turn to go make this parking spot, so. There's no events going on at the Tacoma Dome, otherwise I wouldn't normally do this maneuver right here. But yeah, they tore down the King Dome and obviously rebuilt that into some either T-Mobile Park or where the Seahawks play. I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, Tacoma Dome still that this place is a lot bigger too. We're gonna we're gonna go stand in front here, but uh, this is a lot different looking from this angle. I assume this is where I park right next to this other RV. <laughs> so when I first got to the Pacific Northwest in June, it was pouring rain. We dealt with flooding issues and just a really unpleasant experience when I first got here and I did a lot of urban not urban stuff I did the opposite of urban stuff I did camping I did nature stuff this last week here in this area I'm gonna do a little bit more urban style stuff we're gonna be doing some some boondocking in public places uh, and uh, just kind of enjoying the fact that I have my tiny little smart car to uh, scoot around but yeah today we're doing LeMay Le LeMay America's Car Museum. Oh, I'm loving the inside lobby here. I'm seeing some neon already and some classic hot rods. Again, that's that's I-5 out there, guys. 60 mile an hour both ways through Tacoma. Huh. All right, uh, as we walk into the first of four floors here at the museum, something interesting just happened. When I pulled in, they asked me where I parked, and I said, well, I parked my RV behind the other RV. And then she said, Oh, are you checking in for Harvest Hosts? I didn't even know you guys are a Harvest Host. Are you kidding me? Did I just... She says, yeah, well, we, are, we only have one person staying tonight. If you're a Harvest Host and you give me your member, we can probably just let you stay here tonight. We'll lock the gate at 5 p.m. and you can leave in the morning. But if you need to leave, you know, they gave me all the information. So LeMay Car Museum is a Harvest Host, guys. And this could not have worked out better because I thought I was going to be staying somewhere up north at a, at a rest area or something. So now we get to go explore the museum, maybe check out a magnet on the way out and I get to stay here for free. I love it. We are gonna start right here at the reclaimed Rust James Hetfield collection from Metallica. Oh yeah, the Black Pearl. Wow, he definitely loves classic cars. Look at this beautiful rat rod. I love these low profile windows like that. And it is really neat. And I really like the silver too. One floor down. You just keep going down on the different, I wanna go outside real quick. We've got a deck out here with a possible really nice view. I hear a train too. Let's go see. Yeah. We got, we got an Amtrak train down there. Heck yeah. What a beautiful sunny day. See, this state is nice when it's not raining all the time. <laughs> 1916, folks. Ah, so tempting to blow that horn right there, but you can't touch them. Can't touch any of these cars. These are some early automobiles, 1917. Actually, I believe this whole row of cars uh, changes over. They have different vehicles that they bring in here from time to time just to keep the place fresh. Because instead of a hard sign, they've got a, a TV monitor that tells us that it's a 1920 Buick. Oh, and some advertisements. We've gotta have those as well. Woo. Then we'll go peek into Lucky's garage here on the second from the top floors. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving all the uh, gas signs and gas pumps. Oh, 59 Chrysler, a 58 Pontiac. I love the two tones. See the light blue and the dark blue there? Gosh, that's gorgeous. 
Here's a 57 Packard. And a 56 Mercury. Ugh, ugh, 67 Shelby GT500. I'm not in love with the baby blue color, but man, that is a sexy car. 22 Ford. Hey, we're seeing some neon. They, they did really good at this museum. In somebody's little garage. We got two pick em up trucks, a Chevy there, and uh, a Ford there. Let's see, which one, which one do I like better? I like the front nose of the Chevy. I definitely, but then I like the whole version of the Ford better. See, if we go look at everything after the hood that I love of the Chevy with the step side, I'm, you know, I'm just not in love with that. I wish the Ford could have a sexier front end. I'm still going to have to go with the Ford myself. Yeah, I'm just telling you right now, guys, if you like classic cars, you are going to love this place. You could spend a lot of time in here. I'm just kind of glossing over, over everything and picking my favorites. A little scooter here. A 1960 Lambretta scooter. How many cc's is it? One cylinder, seven horsepower, 148 cc's. <laughs> the white and teal there looks really good on it. It's even got a spare tire. Hey, nomadic fanatic size cars. They're tiny. Whoa, you getting this one through the hood? Oh, it's got that weird one wheel in the back. I feel like those are always gonna tip over. They're cool looking though. Uh, that's the oldest car that we've seen here so far, a 1909 Regal. Oh my, 1958 Plymouth. Uh, there's a great movie out there about cars and specifically this 58 Plymouth. Christine, the uh, car that had a soul and rebuilt itself. It's a great movie based on uh, this car right here, actually. In fact, wait a minute, is this, this may actually be the car from the movie. I know they used a, a few different cars. Man, yeah, that is a sexy car. We're now on the third of four floors. Ooh, a 62 International Harvester. Scout, yes. That is a really cool color, by the way. Look at the bulldog hood ornament. <laughs> Motorcycles, 69 Harley there. That's only a 100cc bike. Boy, that would work great on the back of the RV with tater tot. It's crazy seeing all these beautiful classic cars that just sit in the museum and we'll never see the road again, you know? At least these cars are, are well taken care of here, right? And, and, well, and well appreciated, too. Another two-tone blue 55 Dodge that I like. Kind of surprised to see a Vespa, an 81 Vespa 50cc. But, I, yeah, I guess it's, his, it's, a, it's a classic. Cushman Truckster. Is there an American racing section of this museum? Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, that's actually Casey Kane's Budweiser car. He's uh, from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it does say he has 121 top tens and 14 wins. He's from Enumclaw, Washington. I'll give him that. But man, he had a lot of a lot of sucky races. <laughs> oh, Dale, rest in peace, buddy. Good old number three. Man, 76 wins Dale Earnhardt had. <laughs> Jeez. I love all the artwork they have here too. NASCAR Nation, NASCAR's unique following. Yeah, it's unique. That's what I love. How many times have we done this on this channel, guys? Camped at a NASCAR race. I've done three of these so far. Look at that old, old bussy there. Yeah, that's where it's at. I don't like watching NASCAR on TV. It's, it's all about being there in person. There's another bus with like 40 people on top of it. <laughs> we gotta go to another NASCAR race here one day, guys. What's a good one that I haven't been to that's a, a big, at, at least a mile and a half where you can camp in the infield? I don't wanna camp outside the track and then buy grandstand tickets or watch it on my TV outside the track. I wanna stand on my roof and see the race. So. 
Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of, of a good infield camping NASCAR track for, for next season, leave, leave something in the comments below and let me know. You've got to be kidding me. The last floor is all Route 66? <laughs> I was not expecting this, guys. The Mother Road here in Washington State. There's your path from Los Angeles to Chicago there. And uh, we're way up there in Washington State. But uh, yeah, good for you. Good for you. Got some Route 66 stuff three different eras of gasoline pumps here. So are these all cars that they think are famous because of the mother road? <laughs> I think RVs would be. Holy cow, they have a wigwam exhibit here, guys. Sleep in a wigwam. Yep, made famous in the 1950s for the motor hotels. And I have stayed in one of these in uh, Kentucky. It's not going to be on this list of the four of them that are on Route 66 because it's not actually on Route 66, but Winslow, Arizona, Gallup, New Mexico, Peach Springs, Arizona, and Tucumcari, New Mexico. If you're on Route 66, you gotta sleep in a wigwam. I love it, so as you're walking down looking at a few more classic cars, they've just got all these other little snippets of uh, Route 66 and Temple and of Kits, the folk art roadside attractions. Uh, I've been to that world's largest ketchup bottle, that's in Illinois, actually flew my drone up to see it. The uh, here it is, Jack Rabbit. Are we there yet, the Route 66 family vacation? <laughs> that one boy does not look happy though. <laughs> That'd be a nice car to take down the mother road. A road yet traveled. Look at this classic burger stand, malts, creamy root beer shakes. Gosh, what a neat time to live back then. Simpler life. Thank you, Mr. LeMay, for the Route 66 stuff. They got an interactive area here for the kids. <laughs> Racing cars. Uh, you can learn about how a car works and how it's put together and the mechanics of a car, or sit in, well, half of a Mustang. <laughs> yeah, it's really loud in this area, but uh, we got the Rio Motel, a classic motel. This seems like it's from the 80s, and I don't know if this one's still open, but they got some things that you might have had in your car, like an Etch-a-Sketch. What's that, the, the, the Viewcaster thing right there? Yeah, tic-tac-toe. Some other toys and stuff. There's a, a Game Boy. And I actually had one of those little portable DVD players. <laughs> hey, just so you know, uh, electric cars are nothing new. This is a 1981 Commuta car. It says here down below that uh, it can accelerate to 30 miles an hour in just 15 seconds with a top cruising speed of 35 miles an hour. <laughs> I like that. That is a cool piece in this museum. Looks like something out of Flight of the Navigator movie. I love it. We're getting to the end here. Uh, what the? A 2000 Honda Insight Hybrid Electric. Oh. Was this the first ever hybrid electric, maybe, in 2000? That's possible. Yes! Fred Flintstone's car! Oh, I take it back. This might be the coolest one they have in here. Does this thing actually... It has tires, guys. That's an actual car. Let me see here. It's a 1994 Barris Custom, and it was used in the 94 film, The Flintstones. Okay. Pretty cool. And an 86 Owasso here, this yellow thing here, with a 400cc motor. Interesting. Now that's a car you would have seen on Route 66 back in the 80s. This Mercury with the wood paneling, four-door with, with four more kids in the trunk area, and they got their luggage on top. Yeah, you bet. That's a family truckster. Okay, now I remember this. The 2005 solar car Momentum, the entire roof of the car is covered in solar panels. Again, this is 2005, so this is, this is uh, 17 years ago that this was made, and I knew that it was possible one day that we would have RVs that were built purposely to have solar panels everywhere on the roof, up on the air conditioner shroud, and the entire rig 
would have solar panels, not to power the RV, but to power the stuff inside the RV. This technology has come a long ways. I know you guys are probably aware of folding or flexible solar panels that would work in this application, but we also know, now have, although it's incredibly expensive, they have solar awnings. So it's all rolled away while you're driving, and then when you get somewhere and you get parked, you put your awning out like a normal RV awning, the whole top is flexible solar panels. It kind of adds more surface area to have more panels, and of course I would probably also keep the panels on the roof of the RV as well, but might as well, right? It's really expensive right now. I think those costs will come down in the next decade, and it'll probably be a normal thing to have people have their solar awnings put out. Very cool museum. Let's go back up to the top floor and see if we can secure a magnet for the day. All right, up here in the oh, gift wait, store, wait, and wait. these are the magnets they have. Um, it's, it's a tough one. I think this is my favorite magnet. It's got a DeLorean on it, but we didn't even see a DeLorean. So, I mean, even though that's my favorite looking magnet, I think it's got to be this one that shows the inside of the hole. Oh, actually, this one. This one shows the garage. Uh, I think it's got to be that one, actually. Yeah, that's the last one. <laughs> okay, cool. Very, very cool museum. I just feel like today is going to be a good day. No traffic. Uh, a bonus harvest host, so we've got a place to stay tonight, you know? The only thing is, you probably can't tell, I'm not very level. So I think I am going to get three leveling jacks out, put one on the front tire, two on that tire over there, and then kind of pop the RV up like this a little bit to get me level, since I'm going to be sleeping here, you know? Yeah, let's go check in on those kitties. Uh, you don't look too concerned about anything, Opie. Is everything good? Y you look pretty comfy and cozies and stuff, says... So Okay, well, I'll get some belly while I'm here, okay? Where's your sister? You have to tell me. If you know, you have to tell me. Just point. Under there? Is that where she's at? There she is. Opie was right. You're still under the seat. Why don't you come out and chill, Tara? Yeah, we're going to stay here now. We're done. All done. It's a really nice uh, night out here. Before the museum closed, that other Class C left. I didn't know that they were supposed to leave today. And then they have a, a guy in a, a van down there. But, you know, really, considering there's a freaking interstate right across the road there, it's not that bad. I mean, I can hear it, but it's a steady drone, you know, and I think I'm going to sleep really, really well. Getting ready to turn these lights off. I did run my little Craftsman inverter generator for a little bit today because, man, it was warm, warm. It was very, very warm, and I was just trying to keep up, and I didn't want to run the main Onan generator if I didn't have to. But, yeah, Tacoma Dome over there. I was hoping for some cool lights on it or something. Nothing. The car museum. I feel like it needs some green accent lights or something, you know? Oh, well. Anyways, guys, lots more to come from Seattle. Thanks for tuning in. Tara and Opie and I will see you in the next one. Please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave a comment and say something crazy. All right, bye guys.